Good morning everybody. Welcome to worship for Sunday the 23rd of August 2020. Before we begin our worship, there's just a couple of notices. Tomorrow, Monday, Hobkirk and South Dean will be having their usual Zoom coffee and chat at two o'clock. In the evening tomorrow, also, there will be a worship group meeting at 7pm via Zoom. And advance notice of the Kirk session dates on the 1st of September will be a joint Kirk session and Rubers Law Congregational Board. 8th of September is Hobkirk and South Dean Kirk session and the 15th of September is Rubers Law Kirk session. All these meetings will be via Zoom and telephone link for those who don't have internet access. Let us worship God. Our call to worship is adapted from Psalm 138. We gather to give thanks to you, O Lord, with all our heart. We will sing your praises before all creation and rejoice in your steadfast love. You have created us, O Lord, and made us for yourself. Though we walk through times of trouble, you protect us from our enemies. In you we become everything you have made us to be. Your love endures forever. And our opening hymn this morning is Praise the One Who Breaks the Darkness with a Liberating Light. today in hope and expectation. We come to you as we are, overwhelmed by your actions and in awe of your mercy. Our needs are filled by your love and we lay at your feet our whole being, everything we are and everything we have. We come before you wherever we are to declare Christ the Messiah, our Saviour, our Guide, our way, our life and our truth. Though our walls may crumble, we remember that we, your church, are built on a solid foundation of rock. And through your love, we will never fall. We gather, enveloped by your spirit, in praise and thanksgiving, spurred into action by your love-giving, life-giving presence, emboldened to love our neighbours as ourselves and to preach your holy word to the world. We gather as one body of broken bones, seeking to do your work, praying for forgiveness when we fail, to do what you ca we can to live as you have told us, asking for support when we falter from the path of love for all. We ask for boldness to live in your example, 
to eschew the trappings of this world, to give ourselves wholly to your mission, and to work tirelessly to praise you and love your people. Ever loving God, we come before you in awe at your majesty, in wonder at your works, praising your holy name, this and every day. Amen. Our first reading this morning is Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 to 20. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. Our second reading is Romans chapter 12 verses 1 to 8. I appeal to you therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function, so we, who are many, are one body in Christ, and individually we are members of one of, one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. Amen. Thanks be to God for his word to us this morning. Our opening reflection this morning comes from Spill the Beans. Whose Questions? Who do people say I am? It was your question, Jesus. Your question to us, not mine to you or anyone else. It was you who asked what people are saying about you, who they think you are. I had the feeling it was a leading question, a loaded question, not really the question you were heading towards. Of course, people think you're like another John, preaching repentance and talking to crowds out in the wild places. Or Elijah, with your command over natural forces and the miracles you've done. Or Jeremiah, not being popular with the authorities and not appeasing people. But you're more than a prophet and greater than any other teacher. And you don't care much what people make of you. You do your work with a passion. But who do you say I am? Your question, remember, not one I was asking you. What kind of answer did you expect? We could all echo what our people had been saying. You're like John. Yes, like Elijah, like Jeremiah, but more, more than any of them. But none of us said anything, except me opening my mouth as usual and remembering what you'd said about how it is what comes out of us that shows us up. The thing is, it felt like it didn't come from me. 
Well, not just from my own thinking, but something bigger, deeper, sudden and so sure. You are the Messiah. You are the Son of the living God. And you confirmed I could not have known it, said it from my own ordinary human knowing alone. But you had more to say. Who do you say I am? Jesus, I never asked you that question. Whether I wanted to hear it or not, you told me who you say that I am. Simon, you said, you are Peter, the rock. And I wanted to say, I am no rock, Jesus. I am no foundation stone for any building. I am no starting place for a community. Why would you trust me with a set of keys, let alone the ones that open doors to your kingdom and to heaven? Why would you give me the authority, the responsibility to make choices on earth that will be echoed in heaven? But if I can be so sure of who you really are, how can I doubt what you say of who I really am? That's a whole other question, Jesus. Our second hymn today is Take my life, Lord, and let it be Consecrated, glad and free. dedicated to Roman gods. Jesus asks his disciples, who do people say that I am? This question was undoubtedly a hot topic amongst the disciples themselves and the wider community. The disciples answer reveals Jesus is not considered to be part of the Roman culture that surrounds them at that moment with its belief system dependent on the rituals of cult worship to keep the gods happy. It appears that the word on the street was that Jesus was one of the returning prophets, although differing opinions as to which one. But the crowds haven't got it quite right. Although the Messiah was long awaited by the Jews and in some ways their expectations of Messiahship wasn't entirely clear, for most Jesus did not seem to foot the bill. And so they can only explain their experience of Jesus, his miracles and his teaching, by the possibility of his being a resurrection of a dead prophet, people that they associated with performing miraculous deeds and speaking God's word. The people cannot comprehend a being that is any greater than any of these, and so assume that Jesus is some kind of reincarnation of either the recently deceased John the Baptist or stretching way back into history, Elijah or Jeremiah. The disciples seem to be quite full of information for Jesus 
I imagine a babble of voices as the twelve each share what they have heard until Jesus turns the question on them. But who do you say that I am? Silence. Nobody likes to be put on the spot with an unexpected question. Quite often in such circumstances our mind goes completely blank and even if we knew the answer previously we suddenly find ourselves unable to recall it and sometimes give the strangest of replies. My son Ethan's favourite explanation for some of the bizarre things he has said in such circumstances is, I panicked. Occasionally though the words that come out of our mouths astound us with their comprehensiveness that we did not know that we had. There can be a definite feeling of, where did that come from? It seems that somehow subconscious observations have consolidated themselves into an unexpectedly complete answer. Being put on the spot can force us to really think about what we have observed in the world around us. And Peter's response reflects what he has observed over the previous months and years accompanying Jesus in his ministry. So whilst his fellow disciples seem to be struck dumb, Peter blurts out, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. But the source of his answer is not some other human. It's not based on rumours or hearsay, but on Peter's personal experience of God through Jesus. Peter's experience of God is not a stone statue who requires offerings and rituals to be completed with a living God who enters directly into his life. And we cannot say Peter has, a dis has an advantage over non-disciples, when only last week we heard the story of the Canaanite woman, a foreigner who was so determined that the living God could intervene directly into her life. And nor does Peter's experience and understanding depend on a totally solid and unshakable faith. Jesus' response to Peter's loss of faith in attempting to walk on the water reminds us that though Jesus might sigh in despair when we forget to trust in him, he is still there for us. As with us all, Peter's recognition of Jesus as the Messiah does not make him immune to the frailties of our faith. What Peter is blessed with is the ability to recognise that Jesus is the son of a living God who is dynamic and acts in the present, rather than a static God whose clearest communication happened in the past. Jesus is the Messiah of the living God. And Jesus, a son of man, means that God continues to speak and to act. God does not have to resurrect John the Baptist, Elijah, Jeremiah, or any other prophet in order to speak. God never ceases to exist and to create and to anoint. God can resurrect the dead, but resurrection is never God's only option. It is this understanding and this testimony to who Jesus is that results in Jesus designating Peter as the rock on which his church will be built. It is this testimony that distinguishes Peter from those who cannot see beyond Jesus' actions as a good man to his true identity. It is this testimony that reminds us even in times like this when one of the rocks of our faith, communal worship in church, has vanished, that the Messiah, the Son of the living God, is still there for us. So today, let Jesus ask you, who do you say that I am? What are your life experiences of God upon which your faith is built? When have you felt God taking control? When have you doubted? When have you felt distant from God? All these times are part of our life in Jesus who will use them all to build something new, just as he did with Peter. It is in our weaknesses that Christ's strength becomes most apparent. Who do you say that I am? 
Our response to this question governs our future life of faith. If our experience of God is of a living God who touches every aspect of our lives, then our lives should mirror this. As Paul says in Romans, we are called to be living sacrifices. And he reassures us that no matter what our gifts and talents are, we all have a part to play in the life of our church and in our community. Often it is the repetition of small kindnesses, the supportive word or thoughtful gesture towards others that bears more witness to our experience of God than one-off dramatics. Paul's conversion on the road to Damascus would not have had meaning for anyone else if Paul had not followed through and acted upon what the Messiah meant to him. Through Jesus, church and kingdom are connected. Jesus builds his church on his people of faith so that his kingdom will come on earth and the powers of sin and death cannot destroy it. It is our understanding of Jesus as the son of the living God that makes the church more than just a voluntary association of like-minded individuals. We are not only individual testifiers within a community, but we belong to a community that all together testifies to the life-giving gospel of Jesus. In the end, a life of faithful service may be the best answer to that awe-inspiring question, who do you say that I am? Amen. Let us pray. God of the sea, land, air and space, we pray for your continuing blessing on our troubled planet. Just as Peter saw Jesus for who he is, we can see our world for what it is, your glorious creation, the gift of life, through knowing you. We ask for boldness to do everything we can possibly can to renew and rebuild our planet, to protect it for all who come after us. As one body in Christ, the eternal community of your church, we pray for guidance and support as we continue to bear witness to you. In a world where indifference far outweighs passion, we ask for ingenuity, confidence and hopefulness in order to bring your message to our communities and our world. Living God, we pray for ourselves for this community of your beloved children, that we may continue to be the lampstand that allows your light to shine into the world. That we will use all the gifts that you have given us to proclaim your message of love, to live the way you have told us, and never shy away from the difficulties that come with being a Christian in a time of individualism, fear and persecution. Help this community of the faithful to remain true to your teaching and bring the light of Christ to every person we meet. As summer ends, we pray for all your children, young and old, for those who have returned to school after the longest break, for those without work, for those with too much, for those who make sure we have food on our tables and for those who labour tirelessly to keep us safe and healthy. We ask for your love and support, that whatever this new season will bring, they will find peace and surety in you. God of all, we pray for, your, pray for your blessing on all that we are and all that we do, that we may help to build your kingdom today and every day. Amen. Our closing hymn for this morning's worship is Brother, Sister, Let Me Serve You, Let Me Be as Christ to You. Oh,
Jesus, you ask us, who do you say I am? Help us know you. Grow our understanding of who you are, what you stand for and what you require of us. Let the door to such knowledge and relationship be unlocked. Let your kingdom be born in us and through us be born into our world. And may the blessing of God the Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with us all this day and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>